Hey guys, I'm Tim with bleepinjeep.com. If you've been following along with my project Green Machine, I'm swapping the axles that I pulled from this 1978 F-150 into my 98 Cherokee, a Ford 9 inch and a high pinion Dana 44. Now when I pulled these axles, a lot of people were asking me what I was going to do about the cast in wedges that the factory Ford radius arms connect to. We're going to get to that in a second. After I got the axles home with some good help, I was able to get these pretty clean with a parts brush and some degreaser and then it was off to my friend's shop in Loomis, California where I disassembled the axle and got it ready for what was to come. Here it is, the infamous cast wedge Dana 44 from Ford. Ford does some weird stuff. The high pinion Dana 44 axles that Ford used, the most desirable ones are 1976 through 79 because they all came with disc brakes. However, the 76 and 77 are more desirable because these wedge shapes on the end of the axles are, are welded onto the tube, slipped over it and welded, so they can easily be removed. The last two years, 78 and 79, it's a cast piece and the axle tube does not actually travel all the way through underneath that wedge shape as you can see here. Right in center of frame, that's where the axle tube terminates. So if you were to trim these off, cut them down to clean up your housing, you would essentially be cutting the ends of your axle housing off. Now I didn't want to do that, but I did have two ways to get around this. One, I could have used the factory Ford radius arm clamp and kind of spliced that into some sort of a long arm setup and plumbed that back into the Cherokee but that was a little bit janky to me, so the best option is to use the parts of this axle and retube it with all new tubes. There are some videos floating around YouTube of guys doing this themselves in their garage, but to really do it right and do it professionally and make it better than factory, it takes some specialty tools. Thankfully, I met a guy who retubes axles routinely, so after disassembling the axle all the way down to a bare housing, I handed it over to him. Once he gets an axle housing, he cuts off the tubes, drills out the plug welds that hold them into the differential section, places that whole unit in a press, and pushes the remnant of the axle tubes out of that differential housing. Once that is done, it's a similar process for the inner C's. Again, the axle tube is cut close to them, they're put in a press, and what's left of the tube is forced out of the C. And then you're left with these awesome parts that are just as good as new in most cases, that you can build a whole new axle from. The new tubes for this axle will be 3 inch outside diameter, 3 eighths of an inch thick DOM. The fresh tubes are chucked up on a lathe and turned down just enough until they're an interference fit so that they can be forced into the differential housing. With the new axle tubes machined down to fit into the differential center as well as the inner C's, everything is ready to be pressed into place. They're machined so that it's an interference fit and it still takes 20 tons of pressure per tube to seat these into the differential housing. By forcing them in with this much pressure, it ensures good retention as well as helps with alignment later on on the true bar, which we'll see here in a second. With the new tubes pressed into place, the entire axle housing is clamped down to the true bar and measurements are taken to ensure that the axle is perfectly straight. It's at this time that the inner C's are placed onto the tubes and I had them set to 10 degrees caster to ensure better road manners with the lifted vehicle. Then everything is plug welded, the C's are welded, and the tubes are welded to the differential center. And then from there it was back to rock and road where I began putting the axle back together. I was really impressed with the quality of this retube job and all the machining that went into it may not look like it from the outside, but some fine details such as machining the inside of the tubes for the new oil seals, all of that was done perfectly. And I was really excited that I didn't have any trouble um, getting the, all the seals into place where uh, the guy had machined in the tubes, that's perfect. We then dropped in the ring and pinion gear and the way Ford set up the shims is they put them on the outside of the bearing so we actually didn't have to take any of the shims out. We checked backlash and then we checked the pattern of the engagement uh, just for the sake of it and it was actually not ideal. At this point I was in a little bit of a rush and it was good enough and the truck had been running like this. These axles had been running in the truck like this for 40 years so YOLO. 
And then anyway, uh, all this internal hub stuff was new to me. So uh, that took a little bit of figuring out at the time, but I just reused all the old parts, all the old grease, absolutely nothing fancy there, and then put the brakes back together and everything seemed to work just fine. And no good solid axle is complete without one of these indestructible diff covers available from Rough Stuff. So that's exactly what I put on the front of mine. Before throwing the new wheels and tires on this axle, we wanted to marry the knuckles together. So to, in order to do that, we had to put together the tie rod. And the tie rod comes from the Rough Stuff Specialties Y-Link kit that I'll be using. And the tubing they give you with this kit is one and a half OD quarter wall DOM. This stuff is super stout and it's so big that you could probably fit your factory tie rod right in the center of that thing. It's some really stout stuff and you're not likely to bend it and guarantee it. In order to get it to clear the diff cover at full steer, we did have to bend each end of the tube just about 8 degrees, 8 or 10 degrees, something like that. Uh, just a very small amount and that allowed us to have just enough room, about a half inch gap approximately between the tie rod and diff cover at full steer. So we bolted that down, and then we took a real rough, real rough measurement off the straight edges, clamped to the rotors to get an, a, an idea of what the alignment was going to be, slapped the new wheels and tires on it, and this axle is so freaking cool looking. i got to tell you, I'm really excited to have this going underneath Project Green Machine. Once we did that, we rolled it into place, and this next image you see, this was the first look that I got of this new axle underneath the Jeep, and it's freaking sweet. Alright guys, thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Check the description for any links that you may be interested in, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.